Growth is everywhere. A tree grows from a seed to a plant. And the economy grows too. But how do we measure economic growth? The value of all the products manufactured and sold in a country over the course of one year, along with everything that people do and get paid for, all that amounts to the gross domestic product. When people earn more money and then buy more products and services, the economy grows. Politicians also want to see the economy grow. That's why they work toward achieving greater employment, stable prices and a balance between imported and exported goods. More growth means more money. But for whom? The common belief that greater wealth means greater prosperity for all doesn't reflect reality. It all depends on how the money is distributed. Often when an economy grows very quickly, that distribution is very unequal. But is there a point when an economy has finally matured? The resources that industry requires to grow are limited and the need for raw materials often does not take nature into account. Since the 1970s, some economists have been warning about the limits of growth. They suggest that quality of life should also factor into the equation, along with material growth. In Bhutan, a country in the Himalayas, that's already the case. Their gross national happiness is measured. In addition to income, it is made up of how healthy people and nature are, as well as the opportunities people have in life and how at ease they feel in society. Economic growth and contentment have the same value. Germany is also discussing a new measure of prosperity, with some politicians calling for the inclusion of social and ecological aspects. Even if we're still searching for a solution, more and more people are starting to understand that the economy can only grow over the long term if it also respects a person's basic means of existence. <laughs>